Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast for Hype. This is episode 71. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 71. Introduce yourself to the audience. Good evening, motherfuckers and motherfuckers. Uncle Dolomite, host of the Too Much Game podcast. All streaming platforms, including YouTube. Let them know where you're coming in from. International Hype is not just a hashtag. This is a way of life. Compton, California. Copy that. Shouts out to the West Coast. I need one of these West Coast stations, y'all. I need to get one of these West Coast stations in this rundown. So let's go. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock E-Block Radio Network. Tuesdays, 2 o'clock GFT Radio Network. Wednesdays, 216 The Blend, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursdays is WTNUPhilly.com, 1230 every Thursday. Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. And, for, and Saturday, Saturday is the THC Media. It's 10 a.m. every Saturday. We looking to fill in that Sunday slot, LA. Y'all got something out there. You know what I'm saying? Let's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> work that out. Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is my clothing line. Custom jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, sweatsuits. You name it, we can customize it. We got the babies covered too. The babies, the toddlers, however you got them, we can get them covered. <laughs> um, you follow that at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter, though. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company that is a tri-state area situation. But if you make it worth my while, I will slide. And uh how to hustle live show. July the 31st, How to Hustle Live Show. We are doing another live show. Tickets are on sale now. Hit the link in my bio to get your tickets now. They're only $15. Or call me. I'll pull up on you with the physical tickets. Now, episode 71. You ready, Dolomite? Absolutely. All right. The topic for this week is do you need to be motivated? We always start with the guests first here on the How to Hustle Podcast with Hank. Uh, Yeah. Um, I remember what was that Jim Jones that said that shit on like a million dollars worth of game like without motivation like you need a consistency when you're not motivated but I felt like you can't be consistent if you're not motivated All right, so this topic came out of I'm listening to a podcast and a dude was saying it was two guys and a girl and the guy was saying to the girl like he needed his girl to come home and motivate him every day Because they were talking about, you know, how this conversation always goes with the 50-50 relationship or who's doing this and who's doing that. Uh, And they were talking about in a situation where the guy falls on the hard times. He's looking for a job. And she's like, all right, so what am I submitting to as far as you ain't doing nothing to be a man at that particular moment? So he's like, well, I need you to come home and motivate me. Like, hmm, why you need to be motivated? (laughs) That was a tricky one to me. So that's how I got this topic. I don't I don't need nobody to motivate me. Like I'm motivated by understanding the fact that I got a role as a man. Like being the fact that I'm somebody's father, that's my motivation. Copy. The reason that I got this shit tattooed on my motherfucking hands, this is my motivation. My wife and so, kids. I was about to say let them know for those who are only on audio. Oh yeah, you know, I got I got these tattoos on my hands. I got my wife and my son name tattooed on my hands. I got my daughter name tattooed on me. Like that's my motivation. Just knowing that I got people depending on me. That's what motivates me. If you need a person to come and motivate you, you got life fucked up. Because when they leave, what you gonna do? Copy that. I mean, uh damn. I hate when it turns into just the echo chamber. But uh shit, I'm the same way. Um life is my motivation. Uh, two kids and a wife is my motivation uh, myself just me being me the type of person that I am when I go through this rundown you can see I got a lot of shit going on at all times every day I don't have downtime to just be really BSing my downtime is you know, saying a couple of minutes in the bathroom <laughs> but even then you still got the phone in your hand looking at something watching something setting up something like it's never no downtime uh i don't understand when people do need to be motivated if you got responsibilities people who need to be motivated shouldn't have, don't have responsibilities i don't believe but then again you have people who got four or five kids and a wife and a girlfriend and they ain't got no motivation to do nothing except just be there and that don't make no type of sense to me because shit how you consider yourself a man if you can't get up and go get it exactly and you know like it's something that I would tell women all the time. Like, if a dude asks you to motivate him, you need to get away from him. That's not no man at all. 
that ain't nothing like like she said, nigga. Why why would I submit to you if you need to be motivated? Shouts out the conversations with Glow, because I think I got that from Glow. Um, but yeah, like it's the difference between a man and a male. A male yeah. is, you know, he has a dick. He was born a male. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Chest hair, beard, however you know <laughs> you identify him as a male. Prostate. A ma- yeah, a man is a person who handles his responsibilities. He takes care of his situation. Now, everybody that's a man, like everybody not cut the same as far as financially. Yeah, we can't all handle things the same way that way. But even if you can't, it doesn't make you less of a man. If you as long as you trying, as long as you're giving it your all, as long as you're going at it as hard as you could possibly go. I ain't got no problem with the results that you're giving out. But if you one of those lack for motivation, need a kick in the ass and constantly to be told what to do types, then ah, we got issues. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I look at a man as a duty. I don't look at a man as just being born with a dick. It's a million motherfuckers born with a dick. That don't make them a man. Like it's 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 children born with a dick. It's, it's it's all type of people born with a dick. It's just like a basketball player. Just because you know how to play the game of basketball, don't make you a basketball player. If you're not making no money off that shit, you're not a basketball player. You're just a nigga nah, who play basketball. You, just because you tall and can jump high, don't mean you can play basketball. It just means you're exactly. tall and can jump high. Dwight every, Howard every, was tall. Dwight Howard's tall and can jump high, but he can't play basketball. <laughs> like, well, shit, he you know, have, he he at least made money playing ball. I know a million niggas who who literally at the park right now with a basketball in their hand, dribbling and shooting. They not basketball players. They just niggas who play basketball. A motherfucker with a be, dick ain't a man. Some people just yeah, a person with a dick. Yeah, it's all about how I think it's all about y'all know the house phone rings damn every episode. <laughs> it's all about how you carry it. It's all about how you look at it. It's all about, you know, internally, are you motivated? I don't understand how you couldn't be internally motivated when you're looking at somebody saying, Daddy, what's for dinner? Yeah, because, like, I, I can't see myself being like, I don't know. Like, nigga, say, telling my kids no is like the worst shit in the world to me. Now, if I'm saying no because their grades fucked up or no because they was misbehaving, that's cool. But I ain't got it. I don't like saying that shit to my kids. I don't. I don't like. I. I can't figure it out. Or ah, oh, damn. All right, that's see, out that's of my enough. budget. All right, see, so hold up. Now you opened up something else. <laughs> um, my thing with that is it ain't even about if I can do it or not. It's about you need to understand no sometimes. Yeah. Because if I give you everything that you want and desire, you gonna grow up thinking that the world is supposed to give you everything that you want and desire. And when you go outside this door, and then it's like, well, how come? Like my job ain't making me head mailman or like you get your first job. Why am I not the fry captain? If I've been over here, like I'm special. If everybody's kids were special, then nobody would be special. Yeah, everybody true. thinks that everybody thinks that they baby held the bottle with one hand at a month or two. And it's like, oh, my God, he's so smart. She's so brilliant. If everybody's was smart and brilliant, then nobody would be smart and brilliant. True. But, um, yeah, like. One, it's one of them things where it's like, it's not even about if I can do it or not. It's just sometimes, like, if I gave you two yeses in a row, you're definitely getting a no on the third one. I don't give a shit if it's a dollar. Like, it's the principle involved. Yeah, my thing is more, like, I'm just a make it happen type of motherfucker. And I want my kids to understand that everything I do is to be able to make it happen. You know, like I said, if, if you're not earning what you're asking for, don't even ask for the shit. Nigga, we don't we don't do the whole I do it because you're you. Nah, nigga, it, it's got to be something on top of that. If you asking for V bucks, what did you do to get these V bucks? Because in order for me to get the money for them V bucks, I have to go bust my ass at work. In order for me to be able to do what I got to do for you, I had to do something. So what did you do to earn the right to ask me for that shit? Like that shit yeah. goes without being said. So if you telling me I want something, I'm like nigga. So so what did you do to earn that? And you don't have no answer for that, then you 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 know it's no already. Yeah, see, for the kids, it's like this is the problem with this fucking it's this this these phones with these kids. Like man, they see so much and got so much access to so much shit that like when we was coming up, we just didn't have. We didn't know that this shit was going on over here in Alabama, or this shit is going on down in Miami or over wherever, like. Now they got access to this shit so easy and just they minds just go somewhere that we couldn't even imagine. It's one of them things that I always try to tell myself is like it's not going to be 1997 
when she's my oldest daughter growing up, because I look at her now and she had like her hair pent back one day. And I could just see her face without the hair. And I was like, oh, shit, you look just like me in 97. <laughs> so, like, I always try to think, like, man, it's just not going to be 97. So the shit that she's going to ask for, the shit that she's going to do, plus she's a girl. And that's just a whole another situation where it's like you can't even relate to the shit that they do doing because you're not a female. <laughs> so it's just always going to be a little weird. But, you know, again, you just... You find a way to make it happen. Always yeah, find a way yeah. to make it happen. But that also goes back to being self-motivated and not needing nobody. I don't need my wife to say, you know, the baby's birthday is coming up. Or, yeah. you know, the party going to cost this. Or the hotel going to cost that. I'm like, I don't need none of that. Yeah, that's what I teach my kids all the time. Just like when they ask me for shit, it's always like, nigga, whatever you want, nigga, that's incentive to do what you got to do. If you want some V-Bucks, just remember it's something you got to do behind that. That's going to be life. Everything that you want out of life, it's going to take you doing something to get that. It's going to take you earning something. You'll never get something for nothing. Asking for something without something that you're providing, it's a dead ask. So you always going to have to remember, what the fuck did I do to earn what I want? Whenever I think about something that I want out of life, that's my motivation to keep it fucking pushing. Nigga, I want my lights to turn on when I hit that switch. I want to have a home to go to when I get off work, so I got to go bust my ass. I want to make sure that if my kids is hungry, there's going to be food available for them. If they go crack that fridge open, it's going to be food in that motherfucker. I tell That's my what my that motivation is every day. Hunger is a choice. <laughs> I'm, I'm providing, you, dog. providing you with the option to eat. Now, if you don't like this, then that's not my fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. you have the option to eat. Um, yeah. While we talking about this, though, now, uh, what's your motivation behind the podcast? What motivates you to keep doing that? Because right now, I, I'm imagining, I don't know, I'm saying I, don't, I ain't in your business here. Uh, I'm imagining, though, the podcast is not something that is beneficial to you financially. But nah. what motivates you to continue to do the podcast? Man, motherfuckers need this game. Like, it's, it's, it's just, you just look at society as a whole, and it's just like, man, he, these niggas is goofy. These niggas need fathers. Like, a lot of what the basis of my show is, is shit that I wish I was told when I was 19, 20, 17, 15. Even, like, shit that I see, mistakes I see grown-ass men my age and older than me making. It's shit that I wish there was somebody who told me that I was going in the wrong direction. This is me saying, look, nigga, this, go this way. Do it this way. This could be beneficial for you if you was to do it this way. Eventually, I feel like I'm going to get some type of financial benefit for what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, if I never get no money for what I'm doing, at least the mission that I, I, I started on has been accomplished by the couple of motherfuckers that have hit my DM and say, hey, nigga, that, that, that last episode, that shit was right on time. I needed to hear that. You know, that, that little clip that I seen on your Instagram page, I needed to hear that, nigga. That was, that was right when I needed to hear it, nigga. I was going in the wrong direction, and that shit pointed me in the right direction. So that's my motivation to keep on going. Every time I'm writing these episodes out, I feel like it's somebody that when they hear this shit, it's going to be exactly what, it, what they needed to hear when they heard it. Copy that. See, uh, one of them things you touched on in the beginning, I think that that's just bad old heads. I'm going to continue to repeat that and say that time and time again because the problem with babies having babies is now we're in like the third or fourth generation of babies having babies, which means we never got a chance to have nobody be in the old head, which never got a chance for somebody to guide you towards the right shit. When I was coming up, the old heads would look at the young boy and say, like, either this ain't you and you can't even come over here to be a part of this. And they would protect you and shield you from that shit if it wasn't you. Some of them is like, yeah, his mom is on, his dad left his mom on drugs and he got two little brother, a little brother and a little sister to take care of. He got to be over here. Even though he's 11, you know what I'm saying? His situation is different. And now that puts him in a situation where he's going to do some shit that you know, ain't going to probably benefit him in the long run, but it is what it is because he got two people to look after. Once you got responsibility, that's all the motivation that you should need. And 
So like the shit that you talking about, niggas is just be on goofy time. It's just because your old head can't be twenty nine. <laughs> like yeah, your old head twenty nine with not too many life experiences. How is he the old head? How is he the visionary? How is he the one that sees everything? How is he the one that's guiding everybody in the way to go? Like your old head can't be twenty four. Like unless you're twelve, you know what I'm saying? because he ain't got enough in him. Your old head has to be somebody who's been through some things, who knows some things, and has your best interests at heart. So without ever having that in these last couple of generations, just because shit just been fucked up on top of fucked up, like that's how we got here. And that's a cross the country problem. That ain't just the LA, that ain't just the Philly, that ain't just the one spot situation. So the thing we even in when you like you saying, like you wish somebody would have told you this shit is also too though, you gotta be at the point where you're gonna listen. Because when everybody is 19, we young, dumb, wild, free, and think we're going to we gonna be forever young. Something they're going to throw at you at 19, though, might click in when you're 26. Click in when you're 30. And then it's like, oh, this is why he was saying that. So, yeah, that's why you do got to keep those gems going into people. And, like, maybe they'll get it now. Maybe they won't. But you definitely kind of got to just stay motivated. Again, this is the constant theme of the episode. Stay motivated and stay in they stay on their asses about it. Exactly, because that's, you know, that's the thing, you know, and like, I, shit, I, I, I was getting into it with my kid's mom, like, nigga, I'm, 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 uh, I'm separated, headed toward divorce behind a lot of this shit, because, you know, like, her, nigga, you ain't making no money, but you can sit up here and do this shit for hours and hours, and, you know, you putting all type of money behind this shit and all this shit, and I'm like, dude, like, at the end of the day, this shit is a mission. It's it's not just something that I'm doing. It's not a hobby. I'm not playing with this shit. Like, I'm I'm doing research in order to do this shit. You know, I'm looking up statistics and reading books. Like, it's it's a lot that goes into this shit. Like, nigga, I'm not playing with this shit, nigga. I'm I'm gonna continue to always be a father, but at the end of the day, like, I I I, I seriously look at this shit as a mission, whether I make money or not, nigga. This is something that I take very seriously. Because of the impact that I know that I have on certain people. So, nigga, if, if you think it's something that I'm just doing for fun and you entitled to your motherfucking opinion, but, nigga, I got to do what I got to do no matter what, with or without you. So, uh, this is something that you touched on, two things there. That was How to Hustle Seminars. How to Hustle Seminars was the seminar that I did. You can still, you know what I'm saying, purchase the How to Hustle Seminars. Those are still available. But uh, treating this like a business. If you treat this thing like it's real, it becomes real. If you treat this like it's a hobby that I do every now and again, and that's the results that you're going to get. But if you treat this shit like if it's a business, you put time, energy, effort. Like you said, I'm doing research on this shit. I'm reading up on this shit before I get on here to talk about some shit. And then it's like, yo, you know, that was wrong that you said for 45 minutes on that episode. Then you got to go back and retract it. And most niggas ain't going to go back and retract it, which means now I can't trust your word. You know what I'm saying? So this is how like, like I said, I did the seminars, which how you make money off these situations. Yeah, I can tell you how you do that. I can tell you how you do that. I can tell you why you treat the shit like it's real, though. Because like I just told you how many episodes I was doing, knocking out in one day because I know looking at my work schedule and looking at cleaning jobs and the, like the different things that I got going on, I know I ain't got time for it. But because I'm not going to treat this like a fly by night situation, I'm going to think about this shit a month in advance. So I'm going to look at it and say, OK, this is when I can do it. This is when I can't do it. And we gonna get this shit done because ultimately it all happens based off of this. All of the other shit started off of being able to do this, being able to get people every Monday to click this button, which is why the first line of every episode is appreciate you hitting the button. It's because that's how all the other things are possible. That's how all the other things happen is because you stay consistent, stay motivated, and stay on their ass doing this right here. Exactly. You know, and like I tell, you know, like I tell, I, I told her the the difference between me and you is I understand that it's something that I got to do that's bigger than money. Mm -hmm. You know, like certain motherfuckers that don't understand a person that has a mission or somebody who has a business or somebody who started a business, they don't understand the mind frame of an entrepreneur, somebody who actually has a business. A lot of people, the reason that they quick to tell you that your business ain't going to succeed is because they don't understand what it takes for a business. They don't see the vision, yeah. They, they've never had to build something that they couldn't see the finish line. They've never had to start running and they didn't know where the destination was. You know, like starting a business is like jumping off a building and building a plane on your way down. 
a lot of them they they don't know what that shit is like, so they can't understand the the mind frame of somebody who does that. It's like oh, nigga, sure. all I know is I gotta run. I don't know where I'm running to, and I don't know what it's gonna be in front of me when I start running. All I know is I gotta run. The other thing with that too, though, is everybody doesn't see the vision, and you also people kill you when they be like. They started a podcast and three months later, oh, no, nah, the numbers went down. Like, I ain't doing that shit no more. It's like, did you really, was you really passionate about it? No. Nah. Were you really motivated? No. Nah. Because you might do this shit for five years, six years, 20 years until something happened. But it's all about that motivation. If, you just, if you're solely, strictly in this to do it for money, then you got to find something that makes you completely different. Unless you're going to go viral on the situation and that's how you're going to get it to pop. That's not how this works. It's not how anything really works unless you're hitting a number. Like, because you're going to have to put the blood, sweat, and tears into anything that you're going to turn into something real, something that's going to be tangible, something that's going to last, something that, like you're saying, you got your kids, you're going to want to pass that down to, pass down that business or whatever other avenue that you can get off of doing it. But it all starts with the basis of this is how they going to know it. Yeah, and even motherfuckers who go viral because, you know, it, it, it's the reason overnight success is exist and they go away is because a lot of times niggas get success early and they think that they deserve it they feel entitled to the success like oh well i recorded the video when it went viral i'm gonna record another one and it's gonna go viral then they record the second one it don't go viral and they quit oh nigga i dropped a hit song so now i feel like all my songs are supposed to be hits now they drop five or six songs and they not hits so they stop you know, a lot of times niggas su succeeding too early is a nigga worse enemy because they feel like they deserve the success that they got when they started. They don't like understand Brandon that Jennings it takes that, that grind 55. to keep going. It's like when Brandon Jennings got 55, like his eighth game in his career. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, nigga think it's going to be that easy every fucking time, and it's not. Yeah. I just got off the phone with one of my partners, and he talked about that shit. Like, uh, my homeboy, shout out to Compton Rick Rock. Uh, you know, he got a couple videos that went viral. I don't know if you saw the video of homeboy. He was on the hood of the car, like, give me my phone, give me my phone. Mm -hmm. And old girl was like, give me the password, give me the password. Like, that, that shit went viral, nigga. That shit was on the view. All type of celebrities was posting the video and shit. Like, this nigga went viral. It was like an overnight booyah. And then nigga put out 20 videos and them bitches didn't do no views. And I told him, nigga, like, nigga, just because you go viral one time don't mean you got to do it every time. You just got to keep making videos, nigga. You'll, you'll do it again. But it takes consistency to stay on, nigga. A lot of motherfuckers, they don't get that moment, but they just got to keep on fucking going, nigga. How long was Kevin Hart doing comedy before he cracked off, nigga? 15 years or some shit? Niggas don't even know Kevin Hart had a show that was the reverse of Fresh Prince that was on ABC. And niggas don't even know that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, nigga, Kevin Hart been doing this shit before Soul Plane. A lot of niggas think, like, Soul Plane, they just found Kevin Hart somewhere in Soul Plane. Paper happened. Soldiers. Uh, Paper Soldiers, too, to join. That was the, uh, the Rockefeller drink back in the day. Yeah, like, man, a, lo a lot of these niggas been grinding for decades before you found out about them. Yeah. But it, it, it takes a whole lot of years of nobody knowing who the fuck you are before you get on. And a nigga like Kevin Hart, he understands the the value of that fucking grind. Like, nigga, I got to work like I worked when I started so I could stay on. That's why that nigga worked like that because that motherfucker had to work like that before he got on and he keep on working so he could stay on. All right, let's switch it up now and talk a little bit about the podcast. Too much game. When How long you been doing the podcast? Shit, I started January of 2019. And I had I had another podcast uh, called Cat vs. Dog Podcast that I did with my co-host, Chelsea Perry. But um, at, in the midst of us doing it, like we was doing like test runs and shit, like just to, you know, like prove ourselves to the producer to, to prove that we deserve to have a podcast. And just in the midst of that, I was like, nigga, I need my own show. I didn't even know what the fuck it was going to be about, honestly. I just was like, shit, I, I need one where it's only me talking because... Me and her, we had a cool dynamic, but it just felt like I got a lot of shit that I want to say, and I don't need a motherfucker to argue against everything I say because the <laughs> dynamic of the show kind of became argumentative. Like, 
and not to shit on women or say nothing like misogynistic, but at the same time, you know how sometimes you feel like you in a dynamic where you say something and the person who you're talking to just feels the need to argue against it mm -hmm. or the need to be the devil's advocate. And it's like, nigga, I don't need a, the devil don't need no advocate every time we have a conversation. So sometimes I just need to just get this shit off. So I started that shit on the basis of. I got some some important shit that I need to say to people and I don't need nobody to interrupt me when I say that shit. What's the one episode that you feel like people should tap into to get a good gauge of the Too Much Game podcast? Nigga, that's like the hardest fucking question in the world, Give me two dog. episodes then. It's like five. Because like the thing is, like I got... five, go ahead. Literally, shoot dog, shoot shot. You know what I'm saying? My, 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 la my last episode... Even though I didn't feel like it was all that, nigga, I recorded that motherfucker Monday. My my DM is to this day still going up behind episode, what's that, 135? Uh, the motherfucker was called um, The Art of Charisma. My last episode, if y'all listen to my last episode, one of my earlier episodes, episode 10, Wants Versus Wishes. If I could give you two, it's episode 10, Wants versus Wishes, or my last episode, 135. Copy that. All right, now, uh, one more before we wrap this one up. What is it that you're trying to accomplish with the podcast that you haven't already accomplished? Yes. I honestly can't really, because I was going to say just to make this shit into a fucking profession on some real shit. Like, to, to do this shit all the time. Because of all the things that I do outside of being a father, this is what I feel like I'm called to do. Like, this is what I honestly feel like I do the best, better than I've ever done anything. Like, nigga, I, I, I used to be real good at playing basketball. I'm better at this shit than I was at basketball. I've been driving trucks 16 years. I'm better at this than I am at driving trucks. Only other thing that I feel is a higher purpose than this shit is raising my fucking kids. So I like to make this shit into a full-time profession. Copy that. I mean, shit. If you, when you're serious about this shit, that's pretty much everybody's goal at the end of the day. Um, all right. Throw your handle out there for the listeners before we wrap this one up. I appreciate you coming on, though, bro. Like I said, we've been trying to make this one happen for a couple weeks now. Uh, glad we did finally get to make this one happen. Uh, at Uncle Dolomite on Instagram and Twitter at, you know, Uncle spelled like Uncle Dolomite, D-O-L-E-M-I-T-E because -E, niggas be fucking my name up. Like I had Sugar Free, my favorite rapper. I don't know if y'all know about Sugar Free, but Sugar Free reposted a bunch of my shit and spelled my name wrong. I'm like, damn, dog. So this is I'm the thing here, too. My bad. I meant to say this, too. Whenever we shout somebody out, when you send them this episode, you make sure you tell them Hype only accepts five stars, not four. <laughs> oh, yeah, on some real shit, nigga. Like, don't 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 short a nigga, man. It's just like Uber and shit. Like, nigga, don't try to give a nigga. Oh, it's okay. Nigga, just you give said, him the five stars, dog. It ain't gonna hurt you. You said niggas fucking your name up. Why you think I start the episodes up with? It's hype. It's not hype. <laughs> I'm saying because man, niggas hit me with that all the time. So I definitely understand that. Yeah, man. Spell a nigga name right, no matter what. Even if you talking shit about me, nigga, just spell my name right. I'll say shit, shit. Tell that on, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to the table. Shout out to Jackie, episode 67. If you know a nigga talking some shit about me, that nigga don't know me. <laughs> um, exactly. Appreciate you coming on, though, bro. That was episode 71. We are. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. <laughs>